Alright, separatory funnels. It's this tapered piece of glass right here. It's got a glass stem, a stopcock here that you can turn to open and close it. When the stopcock, when the handle is lined up with it, with the stem, it's open. Otherwise, it's closed. And make sure it doesn't turn too loosely. And notice there's a few connectors on the other side of the stopcock. Um, you can adjust that to tighten it. Uh, but if you're missing any pieces, it's not going to get very tight. And the reason it needs to have a certain bit of firmness to it is because otherwise it'll leak. At the top, we've got a stopper, plastic. Notice the lid does not come down flush with the top of the joint. Um, and yeah, again, when you uh, when you get it, you can adjust the tightness. If it feels like it's not getting very tight, just check with your TA. Uh, or, actually better yet, maybe try adding some water to it, just distilled water. Um, and see if it leaks. Now, when you're not holding it, there's an iron ring you can get uh, in the drawer underneath the fume hood, the top drawer there. Uh, you can clamp it onto the scaffolding. Some of these are a little old, so after you've tightened it, make sure you check it's not going anywhere. The, uh, the sub funnel itself will not directly fit through. You have to kind of angle it in. Um, so just be aware of that. Don't try and force the thing through. Um, let's see. You're going to need uh, some glassware, beakers or Erlen Myers to, on the one hand, collect the stuff, but then also to pour the material in. And you can use a glass stem funnel to help prevent spilling. And in this case, uh, for this video, I've got a organic dye or a chromophore, and that we've dissolved into an organic solvent. And the sort of idea behind this extraction is that say you have some other impurity that you're trying to get rid of that happens to be soluble in water. Now first step is to make sure that you dissolve your your organic compound into a solvent that is not miscible with water. Right? You need to make sure that they form two different layers. And there's a whole ton of solvents that that could that would uh, fall into that category, but at the same time there's a whole ton that do not. Ethanol, for example, is one that will not form two layers. Anyway, we're going to use sodium bicarbonate solution to extract out uh, any impurities uh, in the case here for the video now because bicarb depending on how it reacts uh, it can form CO2 so you want to be very careful about that because you're going to be sealing up a vessel that might be forming gas so that's why you need to do everything here very the way you do things are very particular um, and in the video, I've got one sub funnel here that has the organic layer is chloroform, and another one that's ether. So you can see our orange layer in one case is on the bottom, in another case it's on top. And again, that's going to depend on what you're using, uh, and that you should be aware of that uh, as far as you know which phase is which, which one has the stuff you're trying to keep because your material might move around depending on solubilities and uh, pH. Anyway, when you go to do the mixing, you want to make sure that plastic stopper is firmly in there. Ideally, you'd press it against your palm and then with the same fingers, or the, hand, the fingers on the same hand, grab the sub funnel. Now before you even shake it, we just when you turn it upside down, you open up that stopcock to degas it because again you're possibly building up pressure then you go and shake it and you shake the heck out of it all right notice when immediately when it stops shaking it looks like it's just one layer even though there's actually two different phases in there that's what it should look like well while you're shaking it and right when you're done now when you go to turn it right side up two things one your stopcock better be closed two as soon as you're going to set it in the iron ring or right after, take the top, the stopper off. Again, pressure building up, all right? You don't want to leave it there. Now, with this stuff, I'm going to show you a few things what not to do. Um, first of all, as far as mixing, 
we're not talking about a bottle of wine or a bottle of wine, glass of wine. Right? You're not just swirling it around in your hand here. Um, you can see that the orange and the colorless layer are not mixing at all. And the uh, another way people sometimes mix it is just a little side to side thing again. That does nothing. All right. And the last thing here, as far as when you're mixing, sometimes while people are talking to you, they'll be like, oh, my, they'll, they'll take their hand off the stopper on the bottom. And I'm sorry, I don't know if you grew up in a world without gravity, but do not do that. I can't tell you how many marks you're going to lose for lab performance. And, and, and frankly, this lab doesn't have enough lab performance marks to, uh, to match that. You'll be losing more than for just one experiment. Um, I did it in the video for the purposes of showing it, plus knowing what's in here and knowing that I'm going to have to clean it up and that there's no uh, relatively no risk as far as harming anybody else, spilling and all sorts of things. Again, you do that in the lab, I can't tell you how dead you are. Um, Alright, again, when you set it back down, and then the cork ring, when you're done, you should be popping off the top. We'll get to that in a sec. Once you go to collect your layers, again, know what you're looking for, what you're trying to get. If you want the organic layer as it's running off, the one thing you want to be sure of is that what you collect is pure. All right? You can sacrifice some of the material and stop short of collecting every little drop of organic liquid and that's what you should do to make sure that okay what you've collected is pure there should be none of the water layer in there rather there should be a little organic left behind then you go get another vessel collect all the aqueous including the little bit of organic that was left behind and that's the way you want to go about it uh, make sure you do hold that vessel up close to the sub funnel because you uh, it does not drip straight down. And again, part of the mess in the hood, um, you can easily contain it if you do things that uh, make sense. Now we're going to go to our other separatory funnel here. It looks in the video and. And when, when you're done with the separatory funnel, do whatever you need to do to clean it. Water should be the last thing that you run through there. Uh, in any case, before or after you're using it. So if you do need to use something like acetone, do it early on. And then water after. All right. If you have acetone present when you go to add your two layers, guess what? Acetone is miscible with water and pretty much every organic solvent. So it will actually bring the two together. Anyway. Uh, the top of the sub funnel, the stopper. This is why you need to make sure you take, or one of the reasons you need to take it off. You will not have your liquid flown out in any sort of uh, normal way without it. And again, what you should not do is what I do right here. Open it immediately. What you should be doing is closing the stopcock, then take the stopper off. Because you don't know how quickly it's going to flow out, and if you miss the sort of point of where the two layers come together and you've run off too much well then you gotta do the thing again anyway in this case with uh, the ether and our solvent on top we're gonna run off all the aqueous phase and a little bit of the organic knowing that what we've left behind is only organic no none of the water layer and that's our more pure organic compound now again, for what the sort of imaginary uh, procedure is doing, once we did this wash, we would take our organic layer and we're going to wash it again. And so we're going to have to go back into our sub funnel, make sure that stop cock is closed. If you want to use the glass stem funnel again to be careful and not spill anything. And now, instead of using the bicarb that we just... Uh, ran off which is in the beaker here now we're going to go back to the bottle the fresh stuff 
and add it. And again, these quantities are estimates, all right? So when you go up to get your material at the beginning of the lab, you should be getting all the bicarb you need for however many washes you're doing, and then just ballpark it. Uh, whether you add 10 mils, 10 mils, and then 5, 5 mils, 10 mils, and then 10, realistically, over the three washes, it's not doing much, uh, much difference. And the other thing you need to make sure is that you keep all of your layers until you're done. Until you get that final material, that solid material, or whatever it is you're looking for, keep everything you have. That's another thing that people will often do and you get to the end of the lab and say, okay, well, where's your stuff? And like, well, I didn't get anything. What do you mean you didn't get anything? Well, I don't know. I, I, I did this. I, I followed what it said. First of all, sure you did. Um... And, you know, nothing happened in there. I didn't get any solid material. So, yeah, first off, you didn't do what you were told to. Second, if you had everything, we could go back and get it. And when your next response is, oh, I threw it all away, that is, again, a sign of just f foolishness, all right? And, again, something where you're going to lose marks because it was a dumb thing to do. Every, every, everywhere, every layer that you have, everything you used to run away or run off, all composes or is composed of what you started with. And so to just dispose of it when you know that it's still there somewhere is, well, dumb. Anyway, uh, when you go to run off your second layer, you'll combine it with the original one. And that helps sort of minimize how many total things you're collecting, right? So if you every bicarb layer that washed an organic, you combine into one container. Your organic stuff, you should then go into a new vessel because if anything, it's more pure than it was before. And again, when you're if you, if you're totally done with your step funnel. It's a good habit to wash it immediately, uh, just because you're going to get salts forming and joints stiffening up. And again, you'll probably want to do something like wash it with water, then acetone, then water again. Um, now, I'm showing you sodium saturated sodium chloride solution. This is what we refer to as brine. And every once in a while, when you go into a step funnel, your layers do not separate nicely. Uh, you may end up with like a foamy or milky sort of central layer between the two. Adding brine is designed to try and drive those layers apart even further because you've essentially added, you know, if, if water's not polar enough, make it more polar. How? Make it ionic, or at least ion-containing. Uh, and that's what this is designed to do. So when you've got organic molecules or possibly solvents, that are a little too hydrophilic, a little, a little too, you know, literally on the fence between water and organic, uh, the brine will help drive it apart. And I think for this video that should do it. So just make sure you follow the procedure and ask your TA if you have any questions.